Chapter 20 Julia bolted out of there at top speed. Late once more, and her parents said they'd take away her screen privileges for the whole week, and Zane and River were in the midst of a breakup. Benji said, I'm off to practice my ollie. Want to come? I shook my head. I thought I'd feel better once we got outside, but my stomach was still turning. All right, see you home fries later. It's just left to you and me. He picked up his bike. Scuttled. It was such a strange word, like a crab crawling across a tile floor. But it meant gone for good, didn't it? They were buried in history unless someone came along and dug them out of the pile like we had rescued the robo bee. Phineas, Andromeda, Daryl. All the names on those files. So many projects gone. I thought again of Miss Starsgard in the museum. She had said that science charged forward towards things we couldn't even imagine yet. And that's what scared me. That and one more name that I had seen. Havana. My stomach hit. I looked back toward the house. My brain was leaping, making a connection I didn't want to make. Alana only sounds like Alana, I told myself. And then I remembered how sad she looked sitting on the treadmill while the trainers ignored her. There's something I need to look at, I said, on the computer. He turned his head over his shoulder and looked back at the house. You shouldn't go alone. Come with me, then. We retraced our steps. I tried to catch glimpses of him beside me without his noticing. He really was bigger and stronger. His shadow lengthened out like a giant above mine. Maybe his mom had added other changes for him alongside his latency, like medicine to bulk him up. A lot of parents started doing enhancements like that when their kids turned 13 if they still had their 30% left. Other parents only did what was necessary to fix medical problems. Benji's did all the therapies he needed, but hadn't made any enhancements, even if he probably would have liked some extra coordination for his skateboarding. They never dampened him either, just like my parents. They didn't want to think it was right to mess with temperament like that. Theo stood next to the bulkhead, but didn't bend over to lift the door. What's this all about, anyway? he asked. There's something going on with Alana, I said, and I need to figure it out before something goes really wrong, and I think the answers are here. I thought he would say I was being silly again and chasing daydreams, darker ones than usual, but daydreams just the same. Instead, he said, okay, I guess we should get that clunk running again. When it booted, I knew what file I needed to go to, but I couldn't push the button. The cursor of the mouse just hovered above the file. Finally, Theo leaned past me and clicked on it. All the names were in front of us. Alana, right? He said, ah. So he had noticed, too. Yeah. He clicked open the folder, and there she was. Alana. Alana. I felt sick. Even in the tiny thumbnail picture, I could see her. Not exactly her, but like her. It wasn't the uncanny valley, though. No, this girl seemed more real because she wasn't perfect. In the picture, she smiled crookedly, and her eyes were more hazel than the green-blue of Alana's. She had a mole on her right cheek. But they looked similar enough for me to know they were connected. I clicked on the picture and another document opened. Background. Alana. Advanced Life Artificial Nuance Acclimate. Represents the forefront of research merging cloning, genetics, robotics, and most importantly, artificial intelligence. Rather than being cloned and raised from a zygote, Alana was born a child, a mix of cloned cells grown in the laboratory, and merged with robotic engineering. Typical nano-enhancements were made. What distinguishes Alana from other biorobotics is that, for the first time, we have created a silicone consciousness. I rubbed up my eyes and the letters danced in the screen. I knew what most of the words meant, but I couldn't piece them together and come up with Alana. A clone. A clone mixed with a robot. Well, Theo and my parents had boasted that cloning was part of reproduction. The clones were babies. This was saying she was born as a child. All of a sudden, she was just there. Unless it hadn't been all of a sudden. They get clone cells, couldn't they? Skin cells and even brain cells? Those have been grown in labs and used in surgery. Could they have made all the different parts, grown them separately, and then stitched them together? But this Alana wasn't just a clone. She was robotics, too, like the artificial limbs we had seen. So well designed, they were even better than what people were born with. And all this put together right from the start. They took the clone parts and the robotics and put it together. That was Alana. 100% design. The opposite of natural. We began with memory, recording them using test subjects and Android, and uploaded them wirelessly into her brain, which itself was grown from stem cells harvested from the same child used for other cloning procedures. What child, I murmured. Theo leaned in closer as he read over my shoulder. Initial memories were process-based, starting with simple functions like walking. This was deceptively difficult, as it involved not only memories in the brain, but also muscle memory. Slowly over time, Alana learned to walk, talk, and interact with others. From there, experiments were done with more personal memories, such as a sixth birthday party. They put memories in her, Theo asked. But they weren't hers. This girl, Alana, she thought she had a past, but she didn't. She didn't know what she was. I looked over my shoulder at Theo. He was frowning, his, he was, his brow furrowed. We were both thinking about her, our Alana. I shook my head. I needed to learn all I could, and then we could make the connections. 
I read on about how they were able to give her the memories of a whole life, to give her dreams. It was a big deal when she began dreaming on her own. She never left the lab. She didn't have any parents, just a scientist. She was watched all the time, even when she slept or bathed or daydreamed. Her life was not her own in so many ways. I closed the folder labeled background. You must have been so lonely, I said. That's not Alana. Not exactly. I need to find out why this other Alana was, ske was scheduled. I scrolled through the folder looking for the one titled Problem that we had seen with Victoria. A crow clawed outside, followed by a rustling. Not a big, whatever it was. You hear that? I asked Theo. You're just skittish, she said. My heart was racing, beating on a message to me. Get out, get out, get out. So I clicked on the problems file. The screen filled with a document, bullet point after bullet point. Failure to thrive, altercation, social rejection, moodiness, power maintenance. My eyes scanned all the terms and laid on the final point. Conclusion. At this time, the Alana project must be considered a failure. She is not able to adequately integrate into society. Before that problem can be solved, though, issues of power generation and memory stability must be solved. More importantly, ethical considerations must be fully examined. This project has been put on hold indefinitely. Indefinitely until now, Theo said. I didn't know that words could make me feel this way. Then an idea could sink my stomach and my soul until I was twisted into a knot I wasn't sure I would ever be able to untie. Let's get out of here, I said. I still didn't understand it all, but this idea was starting to crystallize in my brain, an idea I didn't like too much. It doesn't mean anything, I said, as much to me as to him. We were sitting on the merry-go-round in the playground. I sat in the middle and Theo on the edge. His foot hung down and he swung us back and forth, back and forth. I mean, it might not even be related to our Alana. We both saw the picture, Maury. Alana could be the next generation. Better technology. Better implementation. She's not a robot, I said. I put my head in my hands, my eyes closed. All I could see was Miss Starsgard leaning down toward Alana. I've taken a particular interest in biotech intelligence. I presume you have too, Ivana. Miss Starsgard knew. She knew that Ivana was something else. Ivana must have created a power surge somehow during the fitness test. When she fell, you know, in that fried electronics of the treadmills. His voice was growing more excited, like this was one of his complicated puzzles and he was solving it. I rubbed my eyes. If it was true and Miss Starsgard knew it, then why would she have wanted us to see the exhibit? Was she trying to tell us the truth, or was she just so pleased with the developments Krita had made, she couldn't contain herself? No, I told myself. No. I was wrong. I went jumping to conclusions. She's not glitching or power surging or anything like that. She's a person. She's our friend. She has a body and she has memories. They aren't her memories. I bet she wasn't ever in Calliope. She hasn't. She's been here all along. Stop it, I said. But the facts kept piling up in my brain. That's why we, she couldn't name her flag. It wasn't just that she wasn't from California, she wasn't from anywhere. Everything from the cells up was manufactured. She had no parents, no heritage to hold on to. She was totally ungrounded. Maury, you have to face facts. She's a piece of technology. A really cool, really advanced artificial intelligence development, but technology nonetheless. I didn't understand how he could be so calm. He was talking about her like she was a homework assignment, something to be figured out. But my mind was untethered from its mooring. All along, I'd been convinced she was natural. She was so perfect, so beautiful, but she wasn't natural at all. Everything I believed was completely backward. Don't talk like that, I said. Don't even think it. I know the scientists were working on those artificial intelligence projects before, but if what you're saying is true, that's crossing a line. Dr. Varden and Baba had rules and guidelines for things like this. You can't just create a whole new person. That's not right. We have to face facts, he said again. Is that what your puzzle brain is telling you? I asked. My voice sounded like it was coming from someone else. Icy and razor sharp. Have you figured her all out? Have you solved the riddle? I'm just trying to think rationally, he said. Well, don't, I cried. I stood up. The merry-go-round shifted beneath my feet, and I almost pitched forward onto him. I shouldn't have trusted you with this, I said. I jumped down from the merry-go-round and started walking away from the playground. Maury, wait! But I didn't listen to him. I just marched away. I was halfway around the cul-de-sac before I realized I didn't know where I was going. I stopped in the middle of the road, the sun beating down on me, and I looked over each shoulder as the way, um, as if the way would suddenly become clear to me. I couldn't tell Julia because she already hated Alana. It would overwhelm Benji. I couldn't go to Alana herself until I knew just what to say to her. I was all alone on Firefly Lane, something I had never been before.